Welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael, and today I am really excited because I'm actually looking at an Xbox park, and this is called Malton Manor, and is created by Angry Emerald. And I'll be honest, that's the Discord name of this creator, so I don't know if that's actually his name on Xbox, but he is one of the best creators, um, one of the best coaster builders on console, and this is actually an Xbox park. So I'm really excited because this is kind of changing, changing lanes a little bit. So I want to thank Angry Emerald for pre-recording the footage and sending this to me. As you can see, some kind of cinematics of the park. Now this is a smaller British-themed British style park with a lot of um, it almost has like a Thorpe Park type vibe to me and this is just coming from me as an American who's never been to Thorpe Park but it looks like there's an entryway on a bridge you can see this um, this four lane road to kind of get into the park and it looks like there has been a crash which is not good <laughs> but no that's kind of you know just adding something to it some intrigue and oh my gosh there's a car on fire Oh my gosh, Ho hopefully those people are alright. You got the Ghostbusters pack um, looking like they're trying to, um, you know, use the water hoses and stuff to to get rid of the fire. But that's, you know, just adding something different. So it says Malton Manor, stay on the left lane to access the park. And um, let's see, Malton Manor Amusement Park. So I'm actually recording this audio on the PS5, so it's showing up as two screens, and so if there's something that I can't quite read, it's because it's showing up smaller on my screen now. So we got coaches. Okay, so it looks like to actually get to the park, you've got to take a tram over. So that is something different. That's something unique. So this is quite cool. It's a different way to kind of integrate your park. Um, now I wonder if guests really can still walk across, but we'll see in a second as we're waiting for the guests to get on the ride. And like I said, Angry Emerald is just one of the best creators on console. Um, I know uh, Plipcam has spotlighted some of his parks. I think um, he also took part in that um, spotlight that was on Maddie's channel recently where, okay, guests could still walk over, which is still good to access that, which um, had like seven, eight, nine different creators on Xbox kind of come together to make this park. Um, so that is really, really cool. So I will hopefully remember to put that link in the description below. Um, but yeah, this is just a really cool and unique kind of idea. And then now we've got this, um, you know, bigger parking lot. You got wheelchair parking. Uh, looks like we got the little trolley system right here. And I love this covering. This is really cool. Is this just very unique? Um, it's something different. So there is a roadway there in and out. That is, that's cool. I like that. It's just something different. It's a different kind of covering style because, you know, the train doesn't necessarily need to have that protection from rain or stuff, but... Um, and then you got a little bit of a little bit of backstage type stuff there And so those gates I like how those are on the girders. So essentially it would My guess would be at night. They just slide over and kind of cover up those lanes, which is nice to see And a nice parking lot. So it's funny since I started working on my wild winds or not wild winds um, Valley America Park My goal is to have the best parking lot on console and since then I spotlight at least two maybe three other parks that I'm just like yeah This is uh this is an insane parking lot. So this is really cool really a lot of detail um, Next level in that aspect So now it looks like we're going to hop into flip cam mode to kind of look around and enter the park as a guest and so once again since this has been pre-recorded by angry emerald i haven't watched any of this before i'm recording this now um and so i like how we've got the little lines there for where the guests have to wait in line and stuff and then we've got the bag check really nice and i like this entrance malton manor now i don't know if this is something that um emerald decided to kind of base it off of but it's it's a cool entrance it's basic but it does what it needs to do um and then so we got those the areas where you get tickets and stuff like that and it's definitely got it's got an interior there which is nice to see as well and i like the look of having that frisbee on that side as well Ooh, so we got a little little alton towers um 
inspiration right here would be my guess with the not just the one corkscrew the double corkscrew so it says the corkscrew replaced by the falcon so this would be something that was pretty original to the park um, and then the ride was replaced. That's a that's a cool concept. Something new to add in is this kind of like a monument. And hopefully I'll get to Alton Towers someday. But I believe Alton Towers has has that, and that's where the inspiration came from. And look at that invert right there. Looks really good. So we got a sky ride. Is that a little ice cream vendor ice cream car? So you got the flat ride as well. Yeah, I mean, right away, like, it's a very spacious kind of entryway. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of area for the guests to walk, and they all seem to be flooding this direction. So I wonder what's in this direction. Okay, we got a bathroom. Oh, my goodness. Even even made the bathrooms kind of decked out a little bit. You know, that's uh, <laughs> that's really cool. And then the female with no urinals, right? <laughs> um yeah, I, when I was in London, this is, man, this is like almost 10 years ago now, which is kind of crazy to think about nine years ago. I, I was there with my family, and we saw one of those urinals that's like out in an alley that has basically four different urinals in one. And so that was, we don't have that in America. So that was really strange to see, <laughs> but it was really cool. Um, and yeah, so I love this kind of entryway. In this area, so you got that sky ride. So sky ride takes a little bit of a detour, which is very different. And I didn't catch the name to this coaster, but I'm guessing this is the invert with the red fencing and stuff. So it looks really good, and it looks like uh, I don't know if Emerald plays on Angry Emerald plays on the PS4 or the PS or sorry the the older Xbox or the newer Xbox. So it's at 100 percent and maxed out. I just don't know which Xbox he plays on. Um, so I'll need to make sure and ask him that, but... Oh, you got the corkscrew goes through the loop. That's cool. And you got a nice, nice little basic covering, which is looks good. You got a little flat ride there. You can't get me to go on that flat ride. Oh, that's a cool thing. So just adding in those signs on there that say ride area, since we don't have the ability to have the... A lot of the cool like TMTK signs that you get, um, so I think that's a cool touch. Yeah, so taking a look there at the first drop, this is a little bit different of a first drop than a lot of inverts. It doesn't seem to have the the major kind of um, degree of turn, so it looks like maybe a little inspiration from Raptor at Cedar Point with that first drop. Um, now, I'm not as knowledgeable with a lot of the B&Ms in the UK or in Europe, so I don't really know how many of them have a first drop that differs from the traditional 180 degree kind of bank turn. Um, but it looks like we got a little transfer track with it as well. That's the one problem with flip cam is you're always kind of bouncing off guests as you move um, on the cues and stuff. And so here we have a B&M invert and I will talk to you after we take a ride on this coaster. Well, that was a fantastic coaster and 
I definitely have major or got major Raptor vibes from the first drop and then the loop and then the zero G roll there. And look at this transfer track. Love it. So you can see the he used the hazard strips there. And you know, you've got a you got the fencing up on the side. There's all the clutter and stuff like that. And you got a little backstage road here with an extra piece of coaster track, which is nice to see. And so one thing I forgot to mention is all the coasters in this park, which I believe there are three, are done with the four meter method. So um, Angry Emerald is just amazing with that. So you can see all this extra clutter is this kind of just placed back here. Um, and I hope, oh, I love that. Oh, that's so cool. You've got like an extra spare ride back there. That is a really, really cool thing to do. Um, so we got all this, all this extra stuff that's just not being used. And then one thing that I really like about the layout with that coaster, um, as we're kind of, you can see using the sky ride now, is that zero G roll was so well done. What's really tough about making zero G rolls in this game, and I've I'm far from perfect at this because I've yet to make one as good as that one is if you look at a lot of the kind of older more compact smaller B&M inverts the zero G roll doesn't necessarily have that parabolic kind of curve to it to where you see it kind of round and then it's it's uh, inclining and then kind of has this natural parabolic round to the top portion of it then you decline after you reach 180 degrees the, these are more flattened, and I know Nerd Chacho's talked about it before in some of his videos, um, but I think it just has something to do with the G-forces and sitting below the track, but that was so well done, and I mean, look at the views here that you get on this sky ride. Is This is just phenomenal. Um, really, really cool. So I was not expecting this park to have a chairlift with it being a smaller British-style park, but what I think is so cool about this is the experience that you get. Because this is low to the ground, and I mean, it is constantly around this coaster. Um, so I would love to know what's down there. Oh, I couldn't really tell what that was. Um, but yeah, what I'd love to know about this is whether it's from a viewer who can recognize it or from you, Angry Emerald. That, that coaster... Um, what did you take inspiration from? Were there other coaster models that you did? Or did you just kind of come up with a layout that you felt really fit the area? And it looks like we got a dive coaster here. So, I mean, just really amazing kind of path interaction. And you look at the foliage in the space. Um, so it looks like that's kind of got an Oblivion vibe to it. So now as we head over here, at least I think there are three coasters in the park. Maybe the third one's on that other side. Um, so we got the Sky Ride there. And... Just no matter where you're at in this park, you have some really good interaction with the the coasters or even the flat rides and stuff. Um, so we look here at this queue. You know, taking cues from the other queue. <laughs> cues from the queue. Um, so we got a little backstage there. We got a restroom. But I like how you've kept the same kind of general style throughout, which is nice to see. Um, so now as we get into flip cam mode here. So you got a little, oh, it's called Hades. It's a little ride photo booth. What I want to try to do on rides from now on, especially for ones that um, are going to be newer, is trying to come up with a way to design the entrance queue and exit queue like Velocicoaster does or Steel Vengeance in the sense where you can have create some um, rides or some storage or some lockers for one side and then they pick up the um, stuff from their lockers on the other side. So that'd be something I want to try to start incorporating with some of the coasters that would be considered the newer style coasters that I build in a park. Um, and I like the station. You know, once again, it's simple. It's not overdone. But let's go ahead and take a ride on the coaster.
So that was Hades, and I mean, it was short, it was sweet, I liked it, definitely got Oblivion vibes from that. I honestly think it's funny that you put the block section there in the middle, because the actual ride time's like 10 seconds to the block section, 10 seconds afterwards. <laughs> so um, I just thought that was kind of interesting. So we got a little, oh, that's like the log flume that's been retired from the park, so that is a cool kind of tribute. And I love the fencing that you've used around... Um, you know, it reminds me of some that I used in Wild Winds. And it looks like, oh, so that's actually part of the log flume that um, hasn't been in use for 9 to, or 10 to 11 years now. Really cool. And then I love the flower, the kind of floral design there. And we got a custom gift shop in here. So you've even, oh, you've even decked out everything. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, making these interiors on gift shops are, uh, uh, <laughs> A little tedious for sure. So it looks like we got one more coaster called the Falcon, at least from based off the stuff that was on that wall right there. So it's the old Sky Ride. So you can buy one of the old Sky Ride cars. All right, so we got another backstage area here, which is nice. And you know me, I love these maintenance areas. I love seeing all this stuff and how it's been integrated into the park. And definitely a backstage area that has not been upkept, um, which is nice to see. So this is where the employees would walk into um, for those working the ticket sales and stuff. So there were toilets. As I said, I like that building, you know. Um, really good job with the foliage around this ride. And then obviously with the tunnel where the coaster goes through, I think that was really, really well done. And with the lift hill or the brake run, having it on that kind of small slope, because that's what you really see with these dive coasters. Um, some have a larger slope than others. Like the one at Valraven is a pretty steep slope for it being a brake run. Um, so there we got a little boat, and then we have Falcon over here. I'm be honest, I have zero idea what type of coaster this is. Um, so I'm excited to see this, and it's it's funny because it feels so different. Like it's this feels like the newest addition to the park because it's on this separate land. Um, you know, maybe I'd say you need to have a bathroom over here, some kind of food place or something, um, because there's really nothing bringing the guest over to this part um, in terms of the in-game stuff, which is probably why there aren't many guests over here. But also, um, you know, just to have some way to kind of monetize the area and make money and stuff like that. Um, but I love the queue. Once again, carrying that same style fencing around. It just adds to it to have those, um, I know they're not the coaster supports, but whatever those support pieces are actually called. Um, so that's really, really cool. And another station. All the stations are very similar. It's just colors change to kind of fit the needs of the actual coaster and i believe this is the one that's called falcon um so you use the typhoon bar heist but we use, but we're using a different coaster model so it looks like the infinity coaster so i will talk to you after we take a ride on falcon So that was Falcon, and I wonder what coaster manufacturer that was supposed to be. Because um, I know, like I said, using the Invincible train, so using the Intamin trains with the Gerslauer track. So is this supposed to be an Intamin model? Um, obviously, it's not Gerslauer. So it's not using Gerslauer trains. But, you know, obviously in this game, we can use different tracks to meet kind of different manufacturers. So I like that ride. I like it a lot. It was it had some whippy moments, um, good inversions. So if I were to rank the coasters, I would, 
I would say the dive coaster was my least favorite. And really that's just because of the length. Like it's a really short coaster. Um, Falcon was my second favorite with the B&M invert being number one and by a wide margin. Now, that's not to say the other coasters aren't good because they are fantastic, but that B&M invert that you made is just absolutely phenomenal. Love that coaster. Um, so we now take a look at the night lighting. And I guess we're going to take a ride back to the exit of the park as we have experienced everything we need to for the day at is it Malton Manor. Let me check. Yeah, Malton Manor. Um, so I hope everybody just enjoyed watching this video, um, as I definitely enjoyed this. So I want to say once again, thank you to Angry Emerald for sending me this video. The link to this park is in the description for the workshop if you want to download it. I'm also putting some other links to a park of his that, um, I, that Plip Cam and I spotlighted. And then also the spotlight where there's like eight different Xbox creators that really came together to make just an amazing park. So that's all in the description below. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day. Talk to y'all later.